You've seen me do composites. You've seen me do light. And now you're seeing me do color. Not, not right now, but you're gonna see me do that. This is part three. Okay, love that. Hi everyone, team Ryan with you today. And today's video is gonna be all about color and final details. I'm gonna start with making like a few highlights on her hair, uh, on the back of her, and just like try to set her um, like more into the image. So I'm gonna add a few, like a bit of blur to the background, a bit of highlights, and then we're gonna jump into selective color to start the color grading. And finally, I'm gonna use camera to finalize the whole color process and then sharpening and it's done that's it so first things first highlights what i like to do for highlights uh i'm gonna create a u saturation uh i'm gonna do a more in-depth uh, tutorial on highlights uh in the future but for now this is what you get so i i like to create a u saturation select the color of my highlights so it would be like something between yellow and green raise the saturation a little bit raise that lightness invert the layer and then okay let's close all those, those brushes and go to the general brushes so we have the exact same brushes as you guys do okay and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna make it, the brush really small i'm gonna drop the flow a lot and I'm gonna start like painting um, a few highlights on the back of her head. That is gonna bring the sharpness, like that's gonna trick your eye into thinking the image is way sharper than it really is, first of all. And second of all, it's gonna help incorporate your model into the piece a lot more. Okay, I like that. That's a little bit more like this is before and after. Like it feels way more uh, integrated. That's the word I'm searching for. Okay, with the same layer, I'm gonna go into the like the, the stems and just like add a little bit of rim light because it looks good. It's not very realistic, but we also we all agree that this piece was not gonna be like hyper realistic it would be like a artistic take so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna be right back now i'm gonna be introducing a little bit of the same highlights to the background so it all flows together maybe we can drop the opacity raise the, the flow a little bit more just so it all blends together color wise and we start to create the illusion that this was an actual photo kind of like you can see here the before and after and like if you want to go crazy you can even like do something like more like that so now that we did a few highlights what i'm gonna be doing is i'm gonna be creating a new folder and this is gonna be called color and let me know in the comments if you would like to get this psd file uh, i could do that and you could explore the psd for your own like on your own time and don't forget if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe down below just 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 a real a little reminder okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna find all the colors that like we can affect with like selective colors and i'm gonna go and create like different layers this is a thing that a lot of photo retouchers in like portrait photography um, do and I feel like it can also help compositors so this is a technique I picked up recently 
that I really enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And so we have red, yellow, and green. Those are the two, the three main colors uh, we're gonna be working with. And from here, I'm gonna be trying to um, just start making all of the tones work. So I'm gonna start with the red. So red is gonna be focusing on the um, skin tones. So there's no like correct way of doing this. It's just preference, honestly. Like I like my images to feel a little bit more yellowish. Um, so you just need to find the, the look you like. Now let's jump into the yellow. And the reason for me to be like, oh, but why are you like doing separate layers? It's because you can always tweak uh, the white neutrals and blacks on every selective uh, layer. And it gives you a lot more customization of whatever you want to do. So like here, I know, and you've seen on all, uh, on all the other thumbnails, the end product is going to be like yellow, orange, like very octumnal, octum, octumnal, fall. It's going to be very fall. <laughs> and for that, we are going to start building that image now with selective colors. So that's my goal. So I know where I want to go with my surroundings, right? Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so this is before, this is after. We are like starting to get the sunny look into our model. Now that we have our color, like our start color done, I'm gonna um, uncheck the subject folder and hide the highlight layer. And I'm just gonna do an under the subject folder, Alt, Shift, Control, E to merge a new layer. And I'm gonna hide the color and now we have like a full layer with um, our background. And I did this so I could go to blur gallery now and do a tilt shift, a blur filter on this image. So we can finally like add the realistic uh, blur from what a real photo would have. So I'm just gonna do something like this. Like where she is, it would be sharpened and then it would be blurry into the back. Maybe even we could add a second tilt shift and like try to get the top area a little bit less blurry because that's closer to the camera. And I feel like that wouldn't be as blurred as everything else. So now we have the blurred background. I think it looks decent. Um, one thing I'm going to do is with the blur tool, I'm going to go into the UN saturation for the highlights and just blur these lines a little bit so they fit with the new blurry background. Because right now they're looking a little bit too sharp. Now we have the blurred background. We have our start color done. I'm gonna over everything. I'm gonna do a new layer. Control Alt Shift E merge all the layers. Go to filter. Oh, let's turn this into a smart object so we can go back into our camera raw filter. So I'm gonna go to filter camera raw filter, and it's gonna create a smart filter uh, under this layer. Now. We are on camera and I'm going to start by doing the calibration first, then move to color uh, mixer and then do color grading and then do an overall like uh, light and gradients and all that. This is a taste thing. I'm showing you my process. This is not like, oh, this is the only way to do it. I'm showing you the process I take. And from here, you create your own with the same knowledge now color mixer and I'm gonna start with the um, luminance of every color
like I, I like to do this go like back and forth to see what really changes and if i don't see anything i just double click it it goes back to zero and i don't touch it like here you can see in the corner the blues are affecting that corner do i care about it not really so back to normal now if you click p on your keyboard it shows you before and after as you can see like that's a big change and we already had started to put like the yellow tones on the background okay now let's go for color grading and here i i don't like to do this because this it's a little bit not like detailed enough so what i like to do is go one by one uh and i don't like to touch this because this is a mess to me I don't know how people do it. Maybe it's not, it's my computer. I just don't like it. Okay, so here I'm gonna raise the saturation just a tiny bit so I can actually see some difference. Oh, that's not the thing. Okay, and now I'm gonna go through the use and see what fits with the vibe I'm going for. We know like I want a, a very like glowy highlight, natural type vibe. So maybe I would like maybe do a little bit of a green tone like that. Sometimes I have an idea and I have color specifically, but other times I just like find, oh, this is so cool and different. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, this is before and after. So far, really, really happy with this. Okay, now I'm gonna go and do the normal uh, post -pro process that I would normally do. Okay, so now with the radial filter, I'm gonna try and clean her out from the filter. You can always like refine it as much as you want. I'm just gonna try to make it like a little bit fast. So I'm gonna uncheck the mask option. I'm gonna reset the whole thing. I'm gonna drop the saturation a little bit and add a little bit of A's. Check the mask again and paint all of this area that's not in right now because that's making it look weird. Let's uncheck the mask. And like this is without and with. Like it creates a little bit of a aura around her. And I really, really enjoy that. Just a little bit of like last saturation behind her. And maybe we can even like, um, oh, that unselected. Drop the contrast a little bit more and raise the exposure. A tiny, tiny bit, like five. Yeah, 10 is fine, I think, let's see. Like that makes it pop and I'm gonna just clean it here in the edges a little let's make that brush a little bit bigger take the auto mask off just like clear it here because that's going a little bit too far like something like that just to make things more distinct and she pops out of the very yellowish background okay now I'm gonna go with the gradient. Uh, fuck. <laughs> now I'm gonna go with the gradient. I don't know the t t blah, blah, blah. graduate gradient filter. God damn it! It's not that, but you know what it is. Okay, and I'm gonna raise the exposure a little bit so it's like ooh sunbeams, all that good things. Bam, I really, really enjoy that. Like it looks so poppy to me. Now, I feel like 
she could pop a little bit more. I think like this area right here it has a lot of saturation. So what I'm gonna do is create an adjustment layer, vibrance, drop that vibrance, and drop that saturation a little bit, not that much. Maybe that's even a bit too much. I'm gonna invert this layer with a soft round brush, make it big. 10 or 20 percent let's do 10 20 percent oh 20 god damn it 20 percent and just like i'm gonna just paint a little bit where i think things are a little bit too crazy if you catch my drift because not everything needs to be full-on crazy you know what i mean okay like stuff like that, cool. And I think we are close to be done. Final details, I've got a control, Alt, Shift, E. Final things, li literally, go to camera raw. This is how I sharpen my images. Okay, now in camera raw, go to details. Go to noise reduction. Raise that noise reduction to like 15. It's gonna make like a tiny difference, but I think it's worth it. Raise that sharpening to like 20 and while pressing Alt on your keyboard, mask the sharp, like the sharpening you're giving it. And look at that, like before and after. It makes it softer, but sharper. And like, you can see, you can go a little bit higher and like introduce a little bit more sharpening. Um, yeah, and now to finalize everything, go to effects and introduce a little bit of grain. And this is our finalized image. This is it. This is what I would present on Instagram. Maybe a few like the little things would be a little bit different, but yeah, the tools are there. I'm showing you everything uh, I know how to use and use on my own time. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below. Let me know if any of the techniques are new to you. If you would like me to explore some of them a little bit more. Uh, I know a lot of you want to get more info on highlights. So I'm going to be doing a full a focused video on that. Um, other than that, let me know in the comments. Like. If you use this, where do you use it? Share your work with me and I'll be here on the next video for you. That's awkward. Okay. I'll be here on the next one. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.